How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another video here on the channel and today we're going to be continuing on the How to Build a Go-Kart series. Now I took a little hiatus from the series um, while my computer was being uh, fixed and also when I was getting the new software. So basically in sum, the point where we left off in the series, um, I needed AutoCAD software to continue on for the next video and just as you have it, um, my computer crapped out, I got a blue screen so I had to get a new hard drive, reload everything on. Um, and it took me a little while to get the software again through my uh, school's OIT department. So now I have that all squared away, so now we'll be set to continue on the How to Build a Go-Kart series. If you guys remember from the last video of the series, if you haven't watched it, definitely go check that out. But in the last video, Matt and I worked on laying out the rough frame shape and size um, on the ground with tape. Uh, so we did that with tape to just get an overall general sizing um, of the go-kart frame based on how big I am, how far I want my feet to stretch out, um, how wide we want it to be based on you know how wide we are and how much room we want it. Um, so we did that, so now we're going to be continuing on with taking those measurements, recording them, doing a little bit more of a detailed hand drawing, and then taking that and putting it onto the computer. Um, in this video we'll be using AutoCAD from Autodesk. Um, but I'll also explain later in the video how you can kind of, without paying for expensive CAD software, you can kind of do this on the cheap. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So before we get started with the content for this video specifically, I, I wanted to address um, the previous video in that the go-kart showing went fabulous. Um, we unveiled it on March 4th at SD Wrap, and it was an amazing show. Had so many awesome people come by to check out the go-kart. Had uh, people who have never seen the channel before um, and never seen the go-kart build before online come check it out. And also had a few of the fellow subscribers here on YouTube come by and check it out. So that was really awesome to meet some of you guys and to talk with some of you about the build and things like that. Um, but since then, the winter quarter for me was wrapping up, so I was really busy with uh, all sorts of projects and presentations. And in some, this quarter, um, I only had like one final exam, like a test, but I had three different projects that were due um, at the end of the quarter. So I was hard at work at that. Um, and my senior design project, which I'm working on with Will up in the lab that we filmed the five tips on how to survive engineering college. That's the lab we're working in for our senior design project. It's focused around plastic recycling, 3D printing, renewable energy. So um, in this booklet here, what I have here is a list of all sorts of different video ideas that I've been thinking of um, to put out. So I have videos for the C55, Mercedes stuff in general, go-kart stuff of course, and as well as um, videos on my senior design project because I thought it'd be kind of cool to show you guys like what I do at school um, and maybe a little bit more about the school I go to and the engineering school I go to. Uh, so I've been wor working hard on putting this kind of like my video idea booklet. So um, it'll be a lot of cool stuff to come, a lot of fun ideas that I've been working on. So without further ado, I already said this once, but let's go ahead and actually start the video for measuring out the uh, go-kart frame here. Alrighty, so here's the frame that Matt and I laid out in the last video. Um, so today we're gonna be focusing on uh, measuring all the lengths, the angles, and things like that, making sort of a hand drawing, and then going from the hand drawing and taking that and putting it onto the computer. Uh, but before I get started, I kinda wanna explain my, uh, my idea behind this in that this go-kart is gonna be a little bit more complex than this one. Uh, now this go-kart, it, it kind of resembles, as some of you probably know from watching the other, the build of this, uh, this go-kart was modeled to replicate like a shifter cart. And shifter carts, in my opinion, you don't really sit in them, you sit on top of the frame. So if what, what I'm saying by that is there's no real side structure aside from the side pods here. You don't really sit inside it, the seat kind of just is plopped right on top. And that's how all you know shifter carts mostly are. Um, and that was the original design for an idea behind this build. But for this kind of frame design that I'm gonna be showing you guys and walking you through, I'm gonna be designing it such that it's gonna be more of a, 
I don't want to say formula car, but if you guys know what Formula SAE is, I'll put a picture in the video real quick. Formula SAE is basically something that a lot of the colleges, especially ones that have mechanical engineering programs, they'll do this competition, which is this, uh, through the Society of Automotive Engineers. Um, and it's basically a competition where you build a car to certain specifications um, and you compete. Um, so this is kind of where I'm going with this. So the frame won't just be two dimension uh, for the most part. This this frame is a little, you know, two dimension in the, in the middle and front here, but in the back it does have some three dimensional components like where the engine sits. But this frame is actually gonna be built up. So there's gonna be like, you know, it's gonna come up and you're actually gonna sit inside it almost like a soapbox, like derby car. Uh, so just wanted to give you guys a quick lowdown of kind of where I'm going with this um, in regards to the the modeling this this frame here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started with the measurements on the, the frame here and I'm gonna just kind of write, sketch out a rough shape and then do the rough measurements and then I'll go into the more detailed hand drawing. I'm gonna time lapse this uh, so you guys don't have to sit through minutes of me taking measurements. Once I get through each step, then I'll kind of update you guys on how the process is going. All right, so I've got my pencil, paper, and my tape measure. Um, I've decided that I'm gonna take the measurements in uh, metric, so centimeters and then millimeters from that, um, just because it's easier when putting in AutoCAD to do point something millimeters or centimeters, um, rather than inches, you know, they go by the fractions, like quarter inch, five sixteenths. Uh, so it's just a lot easier to go that way, and a lot of the parts for go-karts uh, are um, available in uh, metric instead of uh, U.S. customary. Okay, so after about 15 minutes of taking different measurements and things like that, I uh, came up with this rough sketch. Now I said earlier I was gonna make a detailed hand drawing, but I guess that what I realized is that really isn't necessary because that's what the point of the AutoCAD drawing is for. Um, so this is really just to lay out the rough frame shape and take the rough measurements. Um, now the, the beauty is, is like the, the frame design on the ground there is not, Perfect. It's not perfectly symmetrical. The pieces don't line up perfectly. This is just, that was for a rough uh, general estimation. So this all will then come down to um, the AutoCAD to get it perfectly lined up, perfectly symmetrical, things like that. Which is why I only took the measurements on one side because I'll take these and then AutoCAD has a feature where you just literally mirror this and then I'll just mirror it on the other side. Uh, so it should work nicely. Now one thing I haven't figured out yet in this um, in this video is the 3D dimension. So basically how tall I want you know the, these sections to be. Um, I just haven't thought through that part yet. Um, so that will come, I probably won't do a video on it, but I'll do that on my own time and then fill you guys in. Or maybe I will do a video, I don't know. Um, but this is, this idea of taking measurements and then putting it onto some sort of CAD or computer, you know, CAD software or any sort of computer software is just to help you make it easier on you um, so that you can make it, you know, unless you're really good at hand drawing, which, you know, if I put in the time and effort, I can make a really nice symmetrical detailed hand drawing. But for a lot of people, it's just a lot quicker just to do on the computer, which is why I'm doing this video. So, you know, the point is just to take the measurements from here that you laid down initially, and then to put it on the computer to make it easier going forward. And that also allows you to make something called a build list. Um, basically, what I use when I built the go-kart that I have, 
um, it gave me a breakdown of all the different pieces that I needed to cut out. So I needed to cut out, you know, uh, let's say three 21 inch pieces, four nine inch pieces. So it gives you a build list. So it makes it a little bit easier and nicer for yourself when you got when you want to go in and um, and actually cut all the pieces. Now, granted, these measurements are just the rough. Uh, outline there's gonna there's got to be some uh, cross members here and some bracing for structural um, rigidity and things like that so that's something I'll also go in and add while I'm putting this all on the computer now one thing I'm thinking of doing since um, since it's kind of hard to show three-dimensional stuff um, with tape on the ground is I'm thinking of actually making a little scale model um, hobby shops sell this stuff called polystyrene tubing. Um, it's used a lot for modeling, like making architecture stuff or model bridges. Um, so I was thinking of actually making a scaled down model of this to make it easier to understand in three dimensions. So um, it'll be you know, easy to see all of the uh, you know, vertical parts. Because um, I'm thinking of what I'm gonna do here is this front piece is, uh, this piece here, the, in the midsection is going to be taller and then it's going to kind of slope downwards to the front. It'll still have a vertical part, but it'll be shorter. So um, it'll have like this downward sloping wedge look and I think that'll look pretty slick. So it might be easier to visualize that before I go start building it um, or any of you guys start building your stuff if you make a scale model out of popsicle sticks. But I'm going to use this polystyrene tubing because I've uh, just found out about it and so I'm going to see how it works because I have some future applications that uh, will make it very useful for me. So I'm going to go ahead and get my um, laptop all hooked up on the screen here and I'll throw up AutoCAD on the TV so it's nice and big so it's easy for me to set up the camera so you guys can see it as well. So one thing I definitely don't want to do is turn this into a, like an AutoCAD tutorial video and rather just show you guys kind of like my methodology um, in different parts when making this frame and taking those dimensions um, from the ground there and putting it onto um, a 3D computer, or not 3D, sorry, a computer model. Um, so this is, yeah, so if you guys don't know AutoCAD, it's a product made by Autodesk and it's really a lot for two-dimensional. Um, they're adding, I think there's a, a three-dimensional add-on or a component to the new program now. I haven't really dabbled into that, um, but mainly it's for 2D. Um, AutoCAD is uh, used a lot for civil engineering um, when you do like floor plans or um, landscaping, not landscaping, but like city planning when you design roads and, and housing communities, stuff like that. Um, so if you're in engineering college or you're going to be in engineering college, I highly try, I recommend to try and take a class in AutoCAD. It's a very useful tool. I um, have used it on countless other projects um, and it really gives you an upper hand when designing stuff. Um, so what you can do is use this as like your starting point and then use a 3D modeling software to kind of get you even more forward. Um, I didn't learn any 3D modeling softwares yet. Um, I will be, I'm in the process of actually teaching myself a program called Rhino 3D as well as um, next year in school, in graduate school, I'll be teaching my, or I won't be teaching myself, I'll be learning um, a program well known in the automotive world and mechanical engineering world called SolidWorks, um, which is a very complex and advanced 3D modeling software. So let's go ahead and take these measurements and throw them up on AutoCAD. Hopefully it doesn't take too long. Okay, so we got AutoCAD pulled up on the computer here. Quick note and helpful tip. Um, if you have a computer um, with a dedicated graphics card, or if you're looking to buy a computer with a dedicated graphics card, it will definitely run this program as well as 3D modeling programs a lot better as compared to a, a computer with um, integrated graphics uh, as part of the processor. So, okay, so when we open up AutoCAD, what you want to do is you want to select your units, the first thing. Um, so we're going to go ahead and go to um, the SI um, centimeters and millimeters so that it'll set the grid up um, in that sense. So that's really what you want to start first. You can do that by clicking a or typing in a command called units. Okay, so without making this too repetitive, basically what I'm going to start by doing is um, I'm going to lay down a, um, a center point line. 
and which will be the the line which I revolve everything around for the project. And this line doesn't have to be any specific length. It should be a little bit longer than your frame and everything total, but this will be your center point line. You can go ahead and, and when you're finished, you can delete it later. But this will allow you to kind of have a center um, that you can use to reference when making all of the, di the different components. It'll just make your life a lot easier. Um, so without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and start doing this um, and I'll time lapse this so um, it doesn't get too tedious and if there's anything I come across um, when doing this, I'll definitely fill you guys in. Okay, so essentially now we have the first half of the frame made. Um, so I went in and I had to take a few more measurements to get the suspension arm geometry and the angles um, for that. Um, but now what I'm gonna do is instead of doing that process all over again, I'm just gonna use a nifty command called mirror. Um, most uh, CAD softwares will have a, a um, command like this. So now you type mirror, select all the objects, so again, mirror, select all the objects you want to mirror, click enter, then it'll tell you the first point mirror line, boom, and boom, Let's see if that works, oh yeah, nope, we don't erase the subject source, so there we go, we got our mirrored frame. <laughs> And one of my friends did mention to me that it looks like kind of like a whale with flippers. So now that I see it on the computer, I, I actually uh, agree with him uh, pretty well on that. It's kind of funny. What I might do is I might shrink down the, uh, the front piece here a little bit more. Um, I think that's what I'm, I might do is I might shrink the, the front face a little bit so that it comes to a, a more narrow um, uh, point rather than being I think it's like literally the same uh, Length on the front and back piece here So I think I'm gonna make this a little bit more narrow just to give it a little more of a sharp look and then uh, We'll call it there Okay, so I went in here and I changed the uh, faces of the go-kart of the frame here. So I made this end a little bit shorter than this end, so it kind of looks a little less symmetrical. Um, still looks like a whale, but oh well. Um, that'll get better as I add more pieces to the frame. Um, I also went in and changed a little thing on the, the uh, suspension arms here. So you can see here I added, instead of the piece here coming and meeting the frame at an angle, it meets it and then goes uh, at a straight 90 right to the frame. And that'll make it a lot easier when designing the suspension pieces 
um, to connect to um, and it'll work a lot better rather than trying to connect it at a, an angle and then you got to deal with I mean it's been done but it's just easy to uh, make this piece perpendicular or not perpendicular but you know what I mean it comes and meets it at a 90 so then you can have a piece that comes off the frame at a 90 and then you just bolt it right through there so I've still got a lot to do on this but that is the general gist of how to take measurements and um, from the you know ground or drawings that you made and put it on here. Now I've got to add in all of the structural bracing and a lot of the, I got to make this not, um, I've got to essentially make this uh, have account for the width of the tubing as well and not just um, the lines because the lines essentially have no width. So I've got to go in and do that. And then as well, one thing that you can also do um, if you're working with a 2D software is you can make different views. So this is a top-down view of the frame. Um, but if you wanted to, you know, essentially model a real-life 3D thing, you can do different views. So you can have this modeled facing a 2D um, view of the front, a 2D view of the side, and a 2D view of the back. And that'll essentially, and then, um, and that essentially gives you all of the different dimensions in a 2D format. Um, that those are just different viewing uh, modes. And then a 3D model allows you to see an isometric, um, which is you know looking at it down or up from an angle. Um, but yeah, that's the gist of that. Okay, so I actually went in and added the, the, the width of the pipe in the CAD drawing here. I thought of a quick way to do it. There's a tool in AutoCAD called Offset. And basically you can take a line, take this green line, and you can shift it by so over many, um, uh, however much. Even if it's angled, it'll shift it this way or this way. If it's angled this way, this way, or this way this way, this way. So you just have to s select how much you want to offset it by. So I basically selected the original piece. So let's take this piece for instance, offset it by the width of one inch, which is 2.54 centimeters. So I offset it this way, and now I have the whole pipe width added into the frame. Um, and I did that, that for the, the frame piece, as well as the suspension arms. And as you can see, I actually have to go in and connect it all because, because you offset it on the outside for this guy, the pieces are a little bit short, so you've got to connect them all. And then on the inside, since I offset it inwards, I've got to go ahead and trim the pieces a little bit, but that takes uh, two seconds. Which, this is another great reason why using AutoCAD uh, is awesome, because the tools just make it immensely faster and uh, more efficient um, when you got to do things like this. So, highly recommend it if you have access to it. Now, I did mention earlier that um, there's different ways that if you don't have access to expensive AutoCAD, because AutoCAD, the license for that, is ex pretty expensive if you're not currently um, at a school that uses that. Um, so there is something called Tinkercad, which is a pretty basic uh, 3D modeling uh, software. I don't know how in depth you could get it in terms of a go-kart frame. Um, then there's also something called FreeCAD. So FreeCAD is another open source um, place that you can download and use it. Um, I've never actually personally used it, but I would honestly give it a try. It's pre it seems pretty cool, um, and it seems a, a lot of people do use it. So that is something you can um, also do as well. And another thing that's really basic and rudimentary is um, essentially using PowerPoint. And what I mean by this is like in PowerPoint, you can make drawings with lines, so you can essentially you know, if you really wanted to, you could try and do this through PowerPoint. Um, I don't recommend it, but it is a possibility. The precision is a lot less. So, as you can see, I just made a basic shape here. So, if you really wanted to, you could do that. Um, it doesn't allow you to measure because it's really not a CAD software, but um, it, you could then, you know, size these a certain way and, and scale them and then use markers to show the dimensions. I really don't recommend that, uh, doing it on PowerPoint, but is another possibility. I highly recommend try free CAD software or Tinkercad or anything else you might find. If you find something really useful, uh, shoot it down in the comments so other people could use it as well. Um, so I would just try and experiment with that and see how it goes. 
So over the course of the next few days here, I'm going to be working on just uh, improving that CAD design that I just uh, put together um, of this new frame idea. Um, and I'm going to be adding the structural bits, adding the actual tube dimensions. I think I'm just going to go with uh, one inch tubing, which is going to kind of get tricky because I did all the dimensions in uh, centimeters, millimeters. So that'll be interesting. I'll have to guess, I guess, just convert one inch to metric and see how that goes. Um, but yeah, so I'll be doing that and then eventually I'll be um, thinking of um, what I want to do in terms of the 3D part of it. Um, but as far as building a go-kart, addressing the series here, because this series is supposed to help you step, walk through step by step how to build a go-kart from scratch. Now what I would take away from this video is, is you know, lay out the frame with tape as I said in the last video, take the measurements, you know, take good detailed measurements of all the different components, the length, the spacing, um, the angles if you can, you know, buy a protractor. Um, and then if you can, AutoCAD is excellent for this. Um, so I highly recommend try and get uh, access to that um, or some other free CAD software. And like I said, the quick and easiest way to take this and put it onto CAD is build one half of the frame and do all your geometry on one half of it and then mirror it. It'll make your life that much easier. That's what I'm gonna do when I go ahead and edit this and take it and make it more advanced with the, the bracing and the, the pipe width. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do is just mirror it. It'll, it makes the job twice as fast, literally. And, um, and then also, uh, you know, when you do that, have a center line, because that makes it a lot easier to begin with. If you have a center line to start, um, you can base all your dimensions off that center line, and it'll just make your job a lot easier. I know some of this might have been pretty self-explanatory, like, oh yeah, you take the measurements, you put them on the computer. Yeah, I guess so. But for those that have never done anything like this, like, I, I want these videos to address people that have no background in design, or um, engineering or anything. So if, if you don't have any background in that, you're not gonna know, okay, take the measurements on the ground to get your general sizing and then put on the computer so that you can make it more precise. It makes it twice as fast to model up and make any changes and you can make build lists. So uh, these are, you know, if you're experienced, great. I hope these videos somewhat helped. If not, I'm sorry, but I, I really hope that the people that have zero to little experience um, this has really helped you guys and if, of course if you have any questions about this process of taking measurements and putting onto the computer Please let me know in the comment section below. I'll be happy to answer them for you I, I want you guys to have fun with this because building your own go-kart as I said in the very first video of the series It's very rewarding. It's a lot of work, but it's very rewarding in the end um, and it's a lot of fun uh, in the process and you learn so much I can't tell you guys how much I learned um, by building mine and which is why I'm pursuing even bigger and better designs um, as we speak so with that being said I hope you guys have fun doing this of course any questions let me know thank you all very much for watching today's video please stay tuned for future videos to come around the how to build a go-kart series my go-kart my car and other just amazing automotive stuff anything with four wheels or maybe even less and it goes fast so thank you guys again i'll see you guys in the next one I, I,